Yeah, this is empty. Ooh. That's disappointing. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that, mine's not. Mine is alcohol. And in three, two, one. Hi, everybody, and welcome to A Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. My name is Coco Gem Holiday. And today we're going to be talking about Camp Wanakiki, Season 2, Episode 2, where my lovely co host actually starred in it. Yeah, exactly. I'm super excited to talk about this episode. Honestly, it was, um, if you haven't seen the episode yet, go watch it. Go watch it now. Press pause. Watch it now. Go to Camp Wanakiki YouTube. We'll include the link down below. Yes. Yep. Um, but seriously, it was an absolutely exciting, crazy episode. And we'll just start with Donna's questions. Yeah, Come definitely. Um, so we didn't talk about the Eliminated Queen last episode of the podcast. So I want to start off by talking about the lovely Debbie Fox. Debbie Fox. Fox. Yes. Oh my gosh. Seriously, Debbie is trade.com. I'm not <laughs> lying. Seriously. She looks like that in person. It was like insane. Even without yeah. eyebrows, eyebrows, it was still like, yeah. Yeah, I do it. It's fine. <laughs> well, do you have any fun stories about Debbie? Um, because yeah. she did get to stick around, you know. She does. So, so. Um, yeah, because you're trapped <laughs> with each other. So, um, me and Debbie. Um, me and Debbie got to bond actually on the first day because mm-hmm. we were a little, we're kind of, we acted like the old the old fools like where everything was too hard for us and everything and so here's a piece of background information that nobody else gets okay. to know so debbie actually so we filmed episode one and two on the same day and so that means debbie had to do episode one activities and episode two activities because mm-hmm. they said everybody has to do it we don't know who's going home obviously they didn't mm-hmm. know at that point they're like so everybody has to do both activities yeah. so debbie had to do the high ropes course even though she had to take a Oh, damn. So she didn't get to have any of that airtime. And that is so heartbreaking because that was so challenging. Yeah. Um, so that's some behind the scenes stuff. But Debbie as a person was fantastic. Like, I used to just scream at her that she looks like a woman. I used to just actively say in our cabin, I'm like, I was like, well, we all know that Debbie's the prettiest here. <laughs> There's no question about get that. Get this woman out of this cabin full of drag queens. <laughs> Seriously. I was like, it's like, we're all like, wow, Debbie is Womana. I used to call yeah. her Womana. That's why. Yeah. That's where I came from. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll miss you, Debbie. Hopefully we see you around a little bit later yes, on in the definitely. season. Yes. Um, we're going to get right into the challenge of this week. And Coco already mentioned it. It was the high ropes course. I have done probably like two or three high ropes courses in my life. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems like it's not that far up when you're down on the ground. And then when you get up there, it's like, holy shit, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, OK. I didn't realize I'm like the on the Empire State Building now. But cool. Yeah. Well, and actually, and just a side note, um, being at a drag walking around um, in Portland, people were like, so how come you guys weren't like wearing high heels and stuff like that? And I'm like, well, we're physically <laughs> in the forest doing activities at yes. a girls camp. Actually, it's a boys and girls camp, but yeah. like doing an activity that is made for children. Mm-hmm. Um, so, of course, we're not wearing high heels. So you want somebody to wear high heels going up a ladder across the pool and then on a swing? No, ma'am. Yeah, that that's dangerous. <laughs> and think about it this way. This is why it's dangerous. Oh, my shoe fell off. A stiletto pump falling through the air. Oh, and hits someone in the oh. eye and like goes through their head and like, yeah. <laughs> Graphic. Like Final Destination kind of things. <laughs> Sending that to your therapist. Yeah, too. yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> my non-existent therapist, we learned at the beginning of last ep- episode. Um, couldn't afford her. Couldn't afford her. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, um, so, yeah, that's why we did not wear high heels at all. And mm-hmm. we did wear tennis shoes. And as you can see, a lot of the campers, um, we had to be in helmets and harnesses, obviously. Yeah. So some of us had to change our hair. So you see me being in a head wrap, because um, mm-hmm. that's cute as shit. Um, um, sorry, cute as crap. That was cute as crap. <laughs> Try not to curse on here. We're trying not to, but hey, no one is knocking down our doors to monetize or sponsor us. Like the YouTube ad, ad execs are not, you know, <laughs> coming to this little podcast that got, I think, almost 200 views almost last time. 200. Woo, we're celebrities. But, you know, so these first episodes <laughs> may be a little bit, a little bit vulgar. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Coco, don't be fucking vulgar. <laughs> Yay. So Kitty owned the ropes course. Like, yeah. She got pretty close to finishing. And, like, she went up there and she just served it. And not to, like, make anybody else feel bad for doing that. Because so my story with the high ropes is I'm not afraid of heights. Um, but Donatella's right. Like, when I got up there, I was like, oh, that's a lot higher than mm-hmm. I thought it was. Okay, mm-hmm. cute. Um, <laughs> this is dangerous. And it was windy. So that's cute. Um, the other thing about my turn is... I wanted anybody who was a little bit nervous to go before me because mm. I'm not afraid of heights. 
Um, I can take my time. Like, I let everyone go who wanted to go. Yeah. By the end, I got... And also, you have to keep in mind, some of us are bigger than others. So, yeah. there, there was, like, three adult harnesses, and the rest were, like, kid size. Mm-hmm. So, like, us big girls, which there were quite a few of us this season, um, had to wait. So I waited till like, I think I was like the third to last to go, yeah. seriously. And so by that point, as you can see, even in my edits, like the sun is in a different position because mm-hmm. it's a long day. It was a long day. Yeah. We did the first group of activities and then we did this. So keep in mind in episode one, I did the ropes like thing in the first episode. And then they're like, okay, Coco, go climb another thing. And, like, so, honestly, like, part of the reason I fell was because I was, like, my arms were just dead by this point. Oh, I bet. Like, that thing was so hard to do. And I was, oh, God. Yeah. (laughs) Don't even get me started. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So, kitty litter was awesome. We also, uh, Claire, apparently, was. Spider monkey. Spider monkey on that damn thing. Holy shit. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Damn. Claire finished, like, and just blew everyone out of the water. She Um, really did. And then I believe it was also, it was, um. Ivana that also finished. Ivana, yeah, she was great. She she did super well. Yes. Um, I didn't think that she was that talented in that way. That always sounds really mean. Why do I sound mean when I talk about Ivana? I love her <laughs> to death. But no, seriously, like, cause she's so goofy. Like, she didn't seem like she could get up there and just own. No, you called her annoying last episode. I did. Ivana, she's <laughs> coming for you. I'm going for a gig. I came for her on the internet. Too. <laughs> I was like, Ivana, if you don't respond to me, I was like, I want you to make me a wig. Anyway, long story. <laughs> so, um, but one thing though, um. So here's some behind the scenes tea too. Mm-hmm. And it's all studio magic. And it's honestly not killing like the storyline for you all to know this. But if any of you've been to a camp that does have a high ropes course, they don't all connect like that. Mm-hmm. We had to go up one side and then down the other side, get hooked to another yeah. harness, climb back up to do the swing. Yeah. So it did wasn't. You have to do the whole language where you're like on belay, belay on climbing. No. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had to have anchors for everybody. Yeah. Um, that was cute. Um, the camp, um, the camp director was super nice. Um, nice. I'm not gonna say her name yet because I need to get that approved. But she was super nice and she helped with everybody. Um, there were a lot of people though that did not want to do that. Oh, um, I bet there was a lot of tears. It's scary. It's a scary thing. Oh, yeah. And and like I said, you know, like from the ground, it looks like it's a lot less high up than it is when you're up there. Dear it's, Lord, it is. It's terrifying. It's, it's terrifying. Well, and it, it is. It is. It's terrifying. So speaking of those fears, who were some people that you kind of noticed that struggled a little bit with it? So, um, just to out them completely, because the episode <laughs> didn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, the people who broke down, Boris completely broke down. Mm-hmm. Um, Paris kind of broke down, too. Uh, Diana, as well. Diana Fire. Um, Diana became less of Diana and more of Daddy Bear by the time she was almost <laughs> done. Because, like, she, she's afraid of heights, too. And um, she did it. She got through the first part pretty okay. And still staying in character. But the second part is just really physically challenging yeah and so like she was like starting to curse a lot like seriously they edited diana down so much like every other word was a curse word like it was oh my god and it was getting more (laughs) gruff more masculine (laughs) like it was ridiculous and then when she got down does that harken back to uh pagan holiday from season one with the yeah yeah (laughs) yes Yes, it does does. and it, it seriously when she got down she just like walked away everybody was like <laughs> let's just give diana her moment yeah but what we found out at the viewing party just for you guys to some tea um i guess claire went and followed diana when she went and had her moment and oh, was like yeah. rubbing her back and like are you okay girl Aww. like whatever i was like oh that's so sweet that is sweet yeah because i was like i just stayed away from her because those curse words made me nervous <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying it's a terrifying experience mm-hmm. so um the talent show that night was out of this world with the special guest judge, Tammy, Tammy Brown. Tammy Brown. Who Coco and I actually, previous to Camp Wanakiki, worked with a few times. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, interesting story about Tammy. Um, and Donna can kind of attest to this, too. So, actually, in the episode, you'll see that she goes up and shakes the hand of... Like, you know, the first camper, which is, I think, Boris was in line, and then mm-hmm. the last camper, which was Claire, and I guess they worked together previously. So after the camera went off a little bit, um, basically what happened was she said, she said, you. She was, like, pointing at me, and she's like, I know you from somewhere. <laughs> and I was just like, I was yes, like, you yeah, do. you do, Tammy. And <laughs> I was like, I'll let you figure it out, though. And seriously, like, we started talking about other things, and then she got back, she's like, Grand Junction, Colorado. Mm-hmm. 
She's like, we had we had dinner with your mom, and I was like, yes. yes. I was like, yeah, you remember. Yeah. So she did remember me, which was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, she was super sweet. She hung out with us when we were having um, our mess hall hours. Uh, it was it was cool, and honestly, it was really surprising. I will say, I kind of figured it was gonna be here. Did like, you out of this yeah. world? I was like, who else would oh, they get? Yeah. Like, who else would they get? Teleport like, made of Mars. Teleport made of Mars. Teletubby. Is <laughs> yeah. that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> and Planet Tammy. Oh, you know, Planet Tammy. Yeah. Oh, and she's she's actually a delight to work with. She's funny. She's kind. She is. Um, I haven't seen her in like three or four years. It's been a while. Yeah. It was when we were starting drag, actually, like around the beginning of our drag career. So Coco and I, we're gonna tell you right now. I mean. I don't know if Coco always likes to like give out this secret, but we've been doing this for about six years. Six together. years. Yeah. Six years. So six years. And then um, we started together and we would, you know, help book some of the RuPaul's Drag Race queens for our local pride. And, yes. and Tammy Brown ended up being the first one, one of the first ones that we ended yes. up booking. It was her and Jiggly Caliente. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I was so excited to work with Tammy because I just knew how kooky she was on TV. Right. And I, right. I, personally wanted to see if that was the case for her if it was a character or you know if it was just how she is and with tammy what you see is what you get you yeah know? she's nuts yeah um, love her nuts. so great <laughs> so nice nuts like she's out, she's seriously insane yeah um, no but she love was great her. to work with in that capacity and and honestly like when we did start um i'm gonna let everybody know this beautiful secret because we can't hide them anyway um me and donatella and my ex at the time were doing a youtube just, like kind of just like they were videos, but I don't even know what we were really doing. We were, it was like a, it, if you've ever seen like Alaska's after show thing that oh, she copied yeah. from Wendy Williams, where she's just walking around with a camera kind of talking about mm-hmm. the show afterwards. Like that's what it was. Yeah, um, that makes sense. You can't find them anywhere because I unlisted all of them. They were on my YouTube channel. So good luck. <laughs> I unlisted all of them. <laughs> I really thought that back in the day when my, you know, clown white was my foundation and, <laughs> you know, my nose was like just dick nose looking um, <laughs> that I deserve to be on YouTube talking about like my life and being a professional drag queen in Grand Junction, Colorado. Little did I know I would later regret that. <laughs> yeah. We actually have one with Jiggly, um, which was fun. And Tammy. And, oh yeah, and Tammy. We Tammy have one with Jiggly. We have one with just Jiggly and then we have one with Jiggly and Tammy. Yes. Up in the dressing room. Yeah. Correct. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Damn. Memories. I locked up. <laughs> right. Um, let's get to the out of this world uh, talent show. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's talk about your look first. Um, so my look, and actually the funny thing is like, I felt like I didn't make everything that I put on the show, but I made a lot of the stuff I did on the show. So um, so I decided to go as the solar system as the uh-huh. universe is what my concept was. Um, I was going to go as an alien, but once again, I thought that that would be too, kind of too easy. Like, and honestly, for me doing aliens, I'm not, I'm not creative in that sense. Like, yeah. I'm creative in making something, something that's specific, unique. That's, I yeah. think that's where my drag kind of comes from. And so I decided to be the solar system and I created a ball gown. Mm-hmm. So I bought like the little ruffle thing or whatever that goes underneath the ball gown. And then there were three layers on top of the ball gown and underneath the ball gown. And this is what sucks about the lighting in the room. It, there's actually glow in, there's fairy lights on oh, the whole cool, gown. Oh, cool, to be the stars. Yeah. That's neat. That's yeah, cool. fairy lights. And so there was a blue sheer and a silver sheer over mm-hmm. it um, to make the fairy lights kind of look like a little blurry. Mm-hmm. And then I had like, it's like a little peplum top that went over it. So like that cut my boobs very nicely. Yeah. And then I sprayed on the dress and on the top, like little uh, sparkle sprays to look like mini galaxy kind of things oh, on there. Oh, cute. Um, original concept, actually. This is, I guess this is some behind the scenes tea. So the solar system, the like the planets I was holding mm-hmm. was actually a headpiece. It was a headpiece. I remember piece. that being a headpiece before you left. So, or, yeah. Yeah. And I... The funny thing is, watching it now, I really wish I would have did it. It's almost like that same thing, like with Pheromone when she was doing Lady Gaga, oh, and, and she so didn't, she didn't pull yeah. up in the thing, yeah. Like and how Lady Gaga said, you know, if you're gonna go for it, go for it. And I should have went for it. I just was super nervous about it. So the Saturn thing that I was holding was supposed to be the top of it, and then the planets kind of hang down. So they were supposed to be like braids, kind of like mm-hmm. two big braids coming out. So interesting note, actually, some behind the scenes tea. They gave us notebooks. Um, to where we could write down concepts and things like that. But they didn't give it to us on the first day. Mm. They gave it to us after the Out of This World Challenge. And if you think about it, 
the Out of This World Challenge and the Squirrel Friends Challenge happened on the same day. So technically, they did give it to us on the first day Mm -hmm. in the evening. Because what a lot of us would do is we would write down what we were going to say on the microphone like that morning. Oh, okay. Um, Unless you were Tor Hyman and brought a pageant book with you that had the look, the earrings, the concept, and the and everything prepared, so prepared. That was the word that you gave her. Prepared, <laughs> my gosh. And so I actually had more prepared for my galaxy uh-huh. look, but I couldn't remember it, and I had a lot of it written on my phone, mm-hmm. and then my phone died. Um, so I was like, all right, well, I'll just have to make it up on the spot. So that's what I did. Yeah, work. <laughs> um. All right, some other standouts during that episode. For me, I really, really loved Carly's. The like, I think her name was like Glorpdorp or something like that. Or yeah. Gleep. I don't know what. I can't can't remember the exact name. But um, I really loved that and the whole like ball sack or the ball is yeah. the head or whatever. Absolutely. Oh, it's just, fantastic. Oh yeah, just like fantastic. the space age like secretary that yeah. looked. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I, I, I yeah. mean, and obviously, you know, secretary. we're talking about who the judges chose as top two and Claire, oh my gosh, not only during the oh, high yeah. ropes course, but like the whole like, um, like salon professional that's yeah. going in with the, the multiple arms. That yes. was, it was so oh, cool. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. And in person, it looked insane. I was just like, so when I looked at all the costumes, mm-hmm. um, I looked at Claire's, I was like, okay, well she wins. Yeah. I was like, cause everybody's was good. They were like, everybody's was like mostly good. But Claire's was just so elevated. That's honestly, so we can tell you, uh, Claire won the challenge. Yes. Um, which she should have, and that is no secret. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was so good. It was Carly and Claire in the top yep. two, and, they and then were this, absolutely fantastic. This week it was reversed, so we had a top three and a bottom two last week, and then we had a top two and a bottom oh. three this week. Cool. So bottom three, we're not going to talk about who went home because we'll do that next episode. We'll right. start off like that. But Paris, Barbara, and Ivana were the three that uh, placed in the lower end yes. this week. So their looks, if you remember, um, one thing that the twins always said, which <laughs> we'll get to this in a future episode, but the one thing that the twins always said is they didn't like when something was a complete copy. Well, and we saw that last season with the Edward Scissorhands yes, look they that did. Alexis Bevel right. did. And she was up in the top of the competition the entire time up until she did, you know, I think, Correct. I think until she did that. Yes, look. exactly. So, she was in the bottom two that week. Yeah. Um, and so there was a bottom three and because of the Barbarella that Barbara did and then Ivana, uh, Ivana did, uh, who did she do? Um, from, Ivana, did, it was Mars Attacks. Mars Attacks. The, Mars yeah, Attacks. the alien woman from Mars Attacks. And mm-hmm. Ivana can sew like a demon and so she did make that dress, she did make that hair mm-hmm. and so craftsmanship wise, Fantastic. Oh, great. Yeah. Fantastic. And Paris's makeup was insane. Mm -hmm. Like that green skin and whatever. And then so if you think about what she was doing, she had, she was pretending to be a spaceship that was Mm -hmm. like absorbing like a panda bear. I think she had a tie to Mm -hmm. her. And then she just had symbols on her shirt. Yeah. And I think for that one, the concept was there. The concept concept was was great. I think that it was the execution that was lacking a little bit. Yeah. Um, The colors, I I feel like, could have been a little bit different um, for for just the whole look to make it look a bit more like a ship Mm -hmm. that was beaming something up. Right. But um, yeah, the concept was was very, very creative. Okay. So we went away with Claire apparently winning. Um, Were there any, were you surprised at all by the results of who was in the top and bottom that week i feel like this week was a little bit easier to read than last week yes i did so when when i saw torah's costume um i was unsure mm. about what torah was doing you know same because like uh, the jet pack was cool but i was mm-hmm. like is she being an alien or i, I wasn't quite sure like because i didn't because you just see the costumes, you don't know who the stories are. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Claire's is super apparent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently. Ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. fun. <laughs> Claire's look was apparent. apparent. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I knew what she was going for. With yeah. Torres, I wasn't quite sure. Um, when when they said her story, obviously, it made perfect sense. Uh-huh. So that was something. Um, with uh, somebody said online, because I did read a couple YouTube comments, somebody said online, uh, Three people did like the solar system or galaxy, which would have been me, um, Boris, and I think. And then there was oh, I also Vivica. Re- wasn't it was it? Vivica. I really liked her look. I, it yeah, was, it's it, it was the whole face kini thing yeah. that paid tribute to Lee Bowery. And granted, there were like a little bit of elements of it that were kind of like 
that didn't seem like they were like staying on the bodysuit completely, right. but right. like the look in itself, it was fantastic. I absolutely right. loved Vivica's look too. That was right. one that I wanted to talk about. Well, and mm -hmm. it's and it's so interesting. And here's something that I'm going to share with you because I uh -huh. haven't shared. I wasn't able to really share it with any of the girls on the show. Yeah, is we would talk about who would be at the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And the way that the girls worked in the first couple of episodes is they would always say something to the effect of who they thought was going to win. Mm. Which means all the rest of you could be in the bottom. And one of the things that happened to me on the show, specifically, is nobody really ever talked about what I was wearing, per se. Like, I would have to ask for feedback because I wasn't sure where I was falling in line. Ooh. And I think that a lot of the girls probably didn't... Um, didn't see me as good competition, I suppose. Hmm. Um, yeah, like, I, I'll get to that later because there's actually a moment I want to talk about in, like, um, in future episodes and stuff like that. But the fact is, because um, you have to remember, we, we stay around regardless of when we go home. Yeah. So we have moments regardless if we take a hike or not. So just keep that yeah. in mind. Um, but, yeah, I wasn't ever sure where I placed. And... With the look I had yesterday, I wasn't super in love mm -hmm. with that. I wasn't, like, it, it didn't come together in the way that I thought it needed to. Um, actually, I will say this. I was running out of time. I couldn't find the batteries right away. I had this belt thing to keep everything in place. I do remember you mentioning to me that yeah. it, it wasn't coming along the way that you wanted it to. No, and, like... And, and you almost actually, you almost chose a different outfit last minute. I remember you texting me Oh, about I it. did you, almost choose a different She almost outfit did last. not go down the runway in that gown that she chose. She almost chose a different, um, it was like a, sh oh. a shoulder padded bodysuit, right? A shoulder padded bodysuit yeah. with a face kini kind of thing. Yeah. When I was going to be like an alien princess. Yeah. And the only reason I didn't wear it is it didn't survive the travel. Mm. When I pulled it out, the face kini had cracked a little bit mm. and so that's why I decided not to wear it yeah because I saw what the other people were wearing and I was like dang this isn't gonna get me what I need yeah and so like so nobody really talked to me about what they thought about my outfits and mm. honestly they could have thought I was gonna go home I mean that's fine yeah because I but I would have loved that honesty but you didn't I didn't but you didn't <laughs> I was safe <laughs> she was safe and actually I got screen time yeah so Diana which I thought was fi fantastic um, by the way, Diana's skirt fell off. She's super embarrassed about it. Go read her for it. But, um, but, uh, it, I, it honestly came off fairly naturally. It, it did. Looked, it, it looked, looked like, like it was... something that was a reveal. And she was even talking about being the spoiled princess. So she went and sat on the steps and pouted about it after it happened. I know. And it was just so, so... interesting. Like, I was like, she was so worried about it. It did not even look any kind of way. And uh, it didn't. Um, no. Not to invalidate her feelings, but it looked like it was part of the show. Um, but seriously, like, they actually talked about me in the deliberations like I got screen time in the deliberations from the episode and that was weird because they don't give everybody screen time no you did yeah so you you did it was Tammy complimenting your makeup and then also we know Tammy loves to like knit and craft and do that you if you've ever seen her Instagram she has these dolls that she makes um, mm -hmm. Tammy is all about that so she loved the fact that you had like hand knitted planets and yes. then also your makeup was really stunning it almost <laughs> so it like <laughs> It reminded me of, like, Galaxy Vitiligo. Yeah. It's kind of what it gave me. Yeah. Yes. No, it was cool. Yeah, I, I fucking loved it. That's what yeah. I was going for. Yeah. I, actually, no, seriously. That's what it was. <laughs> and that's, thank you. Um, yeah. No, that's what, Tammy actually said that to me, small behind the scenes thing. Well, before Tammy left, because obviously she's not in the last scene because she had to leave. Yeah. Uh, they're long filming days, by the way. We're up from six in the morning to, like, 11 at night. Like, it's a long day. Yeah. And so Tammy had to go, probably catch a plane or something anyway. Um. But what happened was she said to me, she's like, we talked about, um, we talked about your makeup and how beautiful you are. And I was like, oh, thanks, Tammy. <laughs> That's a good, like, confidence boost Thank while you're in the, in your head. You yeah. Know? Wanting to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like that we're doing this podcast because as for me, it's like, I'm getting to view this all as a spectator and as someone who's just viewing it fresh and clean and for the first time we get that perspective, but it's also an opportunity for you to unpack the emotions that you were experiencing during all of that because yeah. it was strenuous and it was something that was not easy to do. Yeah. So it's kind of cool being able to, to like get both perspectives. Well, and it's so interesting that the, nobody really understands what it's like to be on a reality TV show. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I never understood. 
One thing that's interesting, by the way, I have to talk about this because this we remember the campers don't get to watch deliberations. Mm -hmm. We just get brought back up and somebody goes home and and somebody um, somebody wins. Yeah, that's that's what happens. We do not know what they're saying about us. We also don't know what our prize packages are. Yeah, I don't know how much the twins are going to love us saying that. But the fact is, like, because we say it at all the viewing parties, Mm -hmm. we don't know what we win until the episode airs. Mm -hmm. Um, So the other thing about that is. You don't also know who they wanted to place in the bottom. Mm. So two episodes in a row now, Kitty and Barbara, well, even though Barbara was officially in the bottom this episode, yeah, Kitty and Barbara were almost in the bottom twice. Twice, yeah. Because they're like, they just want Kitty to wear some dang jewelry. Like, yeah, just, yeah. They, I did not know, we didn't know that when mm-hmm. I saw that. Because Kitty is the epitome of camp. Which I do agree with that criticism with her look, just because it was a little bare on the neck and ears when yes. it could have it could have brought the look together a little yes. bit. But at the same time, I loved the detail of that shoulder piece on her look. Oh yeah, I thought it was great, beautiful. Um, yeah, I I thought that was lovely, and I I I like her hair choices a lot, just the way that they are so uniquely her They're so unique <laughs> don't know if it's anything that i would do um apparently i'm just a bob queen you know i don't ever wear any big hair or anything. <laughs> so changing uh, that up the one person we haven't talked about is boris um i liked boris's look um, it was so tongue and cheek <laughs> <laughs> because because of the fact that he showed actual cheek, yeah, you yeah, know? he did show actual. Cheek. I loved that. No, I um, I think I honestly do feel that had Boris um, either completed or you know gotten a a decent um, a decent way in the high ropes course, he probably would have been in the top this episode. I think, yes, I think that the look was enough to to put him in the top. I think so, yeah. And so for my Facebook fans out there and my followers, um, I did say, would she go home in the first few episodes or would she uh, make it farther in the competition so I have one more episode to maybe go home or to stay for those of you who hate me? <laughs> how many people said that they that you wouldn't? <laughs> like, I think like 10. Like, <laughs> and how much of that was out of spite and how much of it was comedic? Um, probably a 50-50 split. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> So we'll Coco see. Coco was super well liked in our hometown. Oh, so much. So much. And so was I because I was her best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone for tuning in to our second episode of A Gem of a Secret Podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. My name is Coco Gem Holiday. And we'll see you here every week as we recap Camp Wanakiki Season 2 and as we continue our podcast talking about different issues here in the drag community in Portland, Oregon. And every week now, starting, we're going to have a Wednesday show next to our Monday official official Camp on a Kiki viewing party happening at nightlight every Monday yeah. at roughly around 7.30. And now we're starting a day of premiere release for the world at Stag PDX um, every Wednesday, starting uh, doors open at 7.30 and shows at 8. And then Donatella and I are going to be part of a new show called i think we're gonna call it harlots mm-hmm. happening every thursday at lad every other thursday at lad tap house yes so be sure to tune into those things we're gonna be posting it on our social media what's your social media again donna it's donatella underscore my secrets um and yeah we'll be filming these episodes every wednesday that we're doing these uh replay nights for the camp yes. wanakiki viewing parties at stag pdx mm-hmm. um so come on out support um the official viewing party for camp wanakiki happens at nightlight Night late on Mondays. On Mondays. So, yeah. Um, do you have anything coming up this week? I have a lot more going on this week than I did last week. So, if you want to talk about it, let's do it. Yeah. So, this week coming up, so when thinking about when this is going to be posted, uh, I have a... It's Sunday. I'm at Radisson Red uh, Recovery Brunch. Um, I think it's called Family Affairs is the theme of that. Ooh. Yeah. Family Affairs. And, of course, Monday at Nightlight. Tuesday, I'm actually going to be at Catch a Rising Star this week because I only have two more left. Oh, that's ending. Yeah, so I kind of want to do it too. Yeah, so Tuesday cool. I'm going to be at Catch a Rising Star. Wednesday I'll be at Stag PDX uh, for the day of Camp on a Kiki viewing party. Uh, after that, I might be doing Hump Day. I'm not quite sure yet at mm-hmm. that point. Nothing is scheduled for Thursday intentionally because we might be starting this new show. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, then I think that's it for me for the stuff I'm going to talk about. Okay. 
Cool. Um, I If this is up by then, I will be out at Legacy Friday night for mm -hmm. Flawless Shade Show. Um, so I'm super excited for that. Um, I'm going to do my best to get everything edited and up by that night. Um, after that, I do have um, Kimberly Michelle Westwoods and Shima Valentine's um, uh, brunch at Stag. Oh, cute. So, yeah, yeah, I'll be doing brunch as well, um, just at a different venue cute. on Sunday. Um, so we will be at Stag that day. It's always a really packed brunch. If you're a Portland native, come on out, come support. Um, we'd love to see you there. Um, after that, I have Mixed Bag at the end of the month. Which I'll be in that too. Yes, Coco will be in that with me. That's uh, the 25th? 25th. 25th um, at Escape. And yeah. I, I know that I have some other things. I <laughs> never write them down. They're just they're follow just my facing. social media. Yeah, follow me on social media. I'll post them all the time, either to my story or on my timeline. Um, if I'm doing a show, you will know about it. I promise. <laughs> even if it's a few days before, even if it's the day before, just check out my social media. I will tell you when it's happening. So, all right. Thank you, everybody, you. for tuning in again for another week. Love you, bitch. Love you too. Bye. Bye.